Hey folks, Arm and Hammer here. You are about to watch a brand new episode of the San Podcast, in which we discuss how my call with Greg Glassman even happened, my long and sometimes negative history with CrossFit HQ, Chase's new deadlift PR, 570 pounds, and a whole lot of other stuff around the entire CrossFit game season, and well, of course, some movies and pop culture thrown in there for good times. Check it out, let me know what you think, and always, be free to jump around using that table of contents down below in the description. See you later, guys. And the audacity to deadlift. <laughs> While I was also deadlifting. How fucking dare you? Exactly. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, at this point, it's just, it's, it is just a foregone conclusion. It's like he started to add blue plates to his bar, and I'm like, well, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> and then it just kept going up and up and up. <laughs> it's very hard at ABP not lifting heavy just because it, it, it'd be easier to lift lighter if I were at Hyde Park Gym and there were actual strong people around, mm -hmm. then I'd be humble enough to let me just go with what feels right. Yes. But when I see so many weaklings around Austin Bouldering Project, I just have to lift as heavy as I can all the time. Yep. May I may I interject here with potentially mm -hmm. a new format for the sand name? Mm -hmm. Sure. Struggling with the audacity of that nincompoop. We can start adding in some additional letters. Some additional yeah, as letters. Yeah, long as they're not capital letters. So it's like, like S. Like in book titles. Parenthetical W T A. Right. Parenthetical. I mean, with T and the N. Those aren't those aren't real words. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like sure. It. So if you mumble, you don't even say them. Welcome yeah. to this episode of struggling, audacity, nick and poop. Ah. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I made that one up right now on the fly, so I'm going to go ahead and yes. credit at Arm and Hammer TV with God that submission. Right. Mm -hmm. It's very clever, very clever submission, changing the game. Well, Armin's going to give himself a follow on Instagram as a reward potentially, for coming up with that name. Uh, potentially not even on camera, as I was leaning out of frame the entire time. So <laughs> oh. even better. Yes. Uh, yeah, guys, welcome to this episode. Mm -hmm. um, has anything happened? Over the several past, things past week? several things have happened apparently yeah armin yeah. um Appar well <laughs> let's cut to the goddamn chase not chase? this one please uh, don't cut me <laughs> but uh uh armin you talked to greg fucking glassman i did how yes. did that happen we've i mm -hmm. we've we've and just to let everyone in uh i we've told armin not to tell us the story of this until the podcast so we've waited for like several days for him to not tell us until just now. Armin, tell us. Who's Greg Glassman? Correct. This is a good question. So um, so you guys know this. Mm -hmm. People listening and watching this do not know this. But essentially, uh, a few weeks ago, I got a call. I, I, I got connected with Jeff Kane, who is mm -hmm. the CEO of CrossFit. Yeah. And I got um, an email that put us together and then within a couple hours we were on the phone and we had a long conversation. We had like a 45 hour, 45 minute hour long conversation. And, um, it started off shockingly with Jeff Kane telling me that he was really pumped about the content that I had been putting out. Specifically the two bearded guys on the podcast, specifically mm. the podcast, the little like yeah. bonus episode, the very first, there are three bearded guys on this it's podcast. True. Actually, there are yeah. four Listen, bearded math guys. has never <laughs> been my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I, I was it's also like, bearded. I, yes. What no, is that, it's like, wait a how's minute. That for, how's that for a viewpoint into my, is, my psyche, like self image? Is, I'm still a child. The two, the two man bond guys on yes, the podcast. Exactly, oh wait, the shit. <laughs> this is like uh, when I'm like, where are my glasses? And then just, face palm <laughs> and feel them on my face yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh so he specifically complimented us on the uh the very first filmed scale is needed video that we put up which was mm. the little sort of bonus episode we did I know, after arguing with you for a few the weeks game. there to finally film it you film it the first time and man that <laughs> takes things up to the Solid. next level <laughs> yeah all it took all it took was that and that's that's uh that was Jeff bogart and bogart out. consulting so, going into mm. business we will grow your Thing. Yeah, that's right. You yeah, will. That's right. Yeah, I'm growing a few things now that I'm on camera. If you know I what I mean, I'm uncomfortable. Mm, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's talking about hair, Chase. Oh. Come on. Well, so, of course. Um, <laughs> so I yeah, he's talking about dicks. We yeah. had <laughs> we had that conversation, and uh, toilet humor. One of the one of the end results of that conversation was, you know, hmm. Greg is doing this media tour type thing, and you know we should we should have an interview. And I was like, all right, that's fine. And the craziness that was the like past few weeks occurred, which was essentially, you know, Katie and I were traveling a bunch 
And then I was back in Austin for a grand total of like 40 hours and then back on the road again for Granite Games. And so when I got to Granite Games, I emailed um, I emailed them. And I was like, hey, you know, like I, I know we still want to do this, but you know, I'm, I'm at Granite Games right now. Maybe we can schedule for next week or whatever works for you guys. And his response was, how about Saturday? <laughs> and my response was perfect whenever you want whenever <laughs> mm-hmm. because there's nothing that's happening that's more important well, than that I was phone planning call on getting moment. married on Saturday but I guess I could move I, that yeah, I guess I could just push that to the next day uh-huh. yeah so uh, I found myself on Saturday afternoon in a car in the parking lot because it was the only quiet place mm-hmm. at, in St. Cloud Minnesota um, and so I was, I was in my buddy's rental car and uh, and that's where I had a conversation with Greg Glassman it was really mm-hmm. cool it was very interesting. He was walking his kid at the time. He was taking his kid to go get a manicure. <laughs> and, um, you know, a screaming three-year-old makes conversations uh, very interesting. But A I manicure think, for a three-year-old? Is that what's going on? I this get her nails. Like, story. play around with, like, oh, nails gotcha, or whatever. Gotcha, I don't gotcha. know. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't really get too many of those details. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just taking was, his three-year-old to acupuncture. There you go. <laughs> taking his three-year-old to the, uh, you know, just the... The sweatshop where, <laughs> where she makes all the CrossFit branded gear, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. T- taking her to the nail salon where she'll be performing several manicures for $7 an hour. <laughs> That's just smart. Capitalism. Man. That's right. Uh, Either you're part of the workforce or you're not. That's right. Got to start those job it's skills $7 early. $7 you didn't have before. No, it was exactly. actually, it was kind of disconcerting uh, because I... I the the first when we first got connected on the phone the first thing I heard was a screaming child and I was like I don't think I called the right number <laughs> 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 yeah and then and and then uh, and then we realized we were on the the right line so it mm-hmm. was it was a very interesting moment it was a very interesting moment in time especially considering the context of literally six and a half years ago I was forcibly removed from the CrossFit Games by Justin Berg mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. the general manager of the CrossFit <laughs> that Games that does bring up the found question. me. And yeah. removed me. I didn't know that it was Justin Burt. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> I, must, I must ask you, in your conversation with Greg Glassman, did you get any indicator that he knew you were that same guy or had any idea of the past history? Um, I don't think I did. I don't think so. Although, I don't Because that was the naked CrossFitter, not That's Arm right. and Hammer. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, that was the naked CrossFitter. It wasn't. It wasn't anonymous. Like I was, mm-hmm. I was written writing under their under my name, Armin Amirian or Armin Hammer, either one. I yeah, think yeah. both of them. But I, I think there isn't as as important as the naked crossfitter was to us. <laughs> I'm mm. not sure the naked crossfitter was that important to everybody else mm-hmm. because even what what I found very interesting was so all of this culminated into this crazy video where I basically mm-hmm. laid out, you know, I don't know, seventy five percent of what he what we talked about mm-hmm. the other 25 percent was just stuff that either is like way down the line and isn't even decided on 100 yeah. percent, or it's just things that it's just thoughts yeah i mean it doesn't yeah. really have a lot of concrete so it's it's hard to it's hard to to publish any of that but uh, we talked about a lot of different things so i published this video and the video did really great and uh and then yesterday crossfit shared my video like mm-hmm. they, they embedded it on the crossfit games website <laughs> with my name and everything yes mm-hmm. and then shared it on <laughs> facebook to two and a half million people yes but you shared it on facebook to two and a half million people what what's funny about the fact that they shared it to their facebook page armin so so apparently something i'm i'm painfully aware of and have been for a long time just being uh. shoved right <clears> in my <throat> face again I am still blocked from the CrossFit Games <laughs> Facebook page mm-hmm. and have been since 2012 when I was forcibly removed from the CrossFit Games. It's incredible. I remember during during the Open when you could vote on what the workout was going to be. I was like, You're right please go vote. vote for this because this is the workout I want to <laughs> do. I can't. I can't. I cannot. So I've been shut out. So you're basically a felon. You, your right yes. to vote have been lost. You can't buy a gun Correct. either. Whenever he goes to... A, Dave Castro's w- handing out guns next time. It's I not, not going one. to you. Yeah. The worst yeah. part is when he goes to new CrossFit uh, cities to do fitness, he has to go door to door and explain to him <laughs> that he's on a list. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So, so not only not only that. Uh, yeah. Which so you can see, by the way, on on your Instagram stories, you showing like, look, it's my face and my name on the CrossFit Facebook page, and I am shut out from sharing I, or interacting with this content. Nothing with that content. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, my my, and I think also 
uh, yeah, so so I can't interact. I can't comment. I can't like. I could share it. I did share it, which was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I shared it with the comment of this is killing me right now. Like I have <laughs> not laughed this hard in a long time considering this is me on the CrossFit Games page doing what I mm-hmm. do. Not being able to interact yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but someone pointed out to me, Lauren Gibbs, uh, Olympic silver medalist, pointed nice. out to me. She was like, you know, you probably have outlasted the guy who, who blocked you on Facebook to begin with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I was like, fuck yeah. Yes. That is the game of Survivor that it, I am yes. good at. It is. Who Do you know who it is specifically who blocked you? I do not know who it is that blocked me. But if you had uh-huh. asked me six years ago if we would be living in a time where my content was on the CrossFit Games page and yeah, Russell yeah. Berger was fired, I would tell you I only predicted one of those things. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and for those, I don't even know if I necessarily have the, the full full story on you getting removed from the CrossFit Games, is that something we should bring the scale as needed uh, audience in on? Yeah, like I kind of a little a little arm and hammer naked CrossFit or history lesson for those of us who are talking about this yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Because I, I don't know I don't know if I'll be able to make like a video about it, but yeah. I think it's worth it being out there. I think some people are. are trying to figure out who I am and why I'm having phone calls with Greg Glassman. Exactly. Or like pr- Team Richie is having that same right. thing. Team Richie yeah. had that same... I, 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 I've been watching his Craig's videos recently and he constantly... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Chase, Chase sent me the funniest the funniest perspective on this thing that with oh, Craig Richie. So basically, I've been watching these videos with Craig Richie and uh-huh. he's like he's like quoting me in these in these videos of mm-hmm. his where he's talking, giving his opinion about, about the CrossFit games, uh, uh, format and stuff. And chase sent me this series of texts, which put this whole Craig Ritchie thing in perspective in a way that <clears throat> I could not, I couldn't understand until, until chase explained. So go ahead, chase. Um, go right ahead. So, <laughs> so, so I, I, I introduced Armin to team Ritchie. I'm pretty sure, but this is how it must be from, from team Ritchie's perspective. Like, this is my quote. Like, first, this Armin guy just introduced himself to me at the games. Second, huh, this Armin dude has a YouTube channel. (laughs) Third, this Armin guy is making up shit about the CrossFit games. (laughs) (laughs) Fourth, this Armin dude was right. What the fuck? (laughs) Fifth, okay, so now this Armin guy just talks on the phone with the CEO of CrossFit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. And all Richie's of that right has now. happened in the mm. past like six weeks. Like and, uh, literally six weeks ago, I was deadlifting with with Craig yeah, and yeah, yeah. Jazz mm-hmm. in Madison. Yes, and, and they were like, "I don't know who you are, but you've got a YouTube channel. We'll link it below." And then, yeah, like, yeah. you know, cut to <laughs> you know whatever's going on now. Well, that's the yeah, that's that's the fun. And shout out to Craig Ritchie and Team Ritchie uh, for uh, giving uh, for giving Armin the uh, the uh, the Ritchie bump they call it uh, uh, with some of those on some of those early videos. But it's so funny that the YouTube channel is very very new and probably a lot of people are discovering you through the YouTube channel, perhaps for the first time, and yet uh, Armin Hammer has been deep in this space in the podcasting world and all the way back to the blogging world, Dude, really. Forever. Yes, forever and ever, for as long as there has been CrossFit. Yeah, so. I, I started CrossFitting in like 2008, so I'm mm. coming up on my 10-year anniversary. Are we yep. doing the Armin Hammer origin story We're podcast? doing the origin story right now. Holy we're doing shit. Very, we're doing a quick a truncated version of the origin story. Can I be Ra's al Ghul? Yes. Do you remember what yes. month you started? Which one of us started first in uh, 2008? You guys probably Ooh. started before me because I we started in the summer. Late. Yeah, started, I started, we, we I started been, in yeah, we'd have been fall. summer of 2008 right around the same time as Kalipa winning the games. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, yes. I, my first workout was probably in November, cool. maybe December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I still remember the my brother had started CrossFitting before me and he was like, you should try this thing. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to try that thing. Mm-hmm. He's like, take a look at this video. And he showed me Josh Everett doing King Kong. And I was like, I'm trying that thing. Yeah. Uh, that looks dope. That I'm doing that now. fucking epic. Uh, and so, that video. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I still watch that video on a regular basis. It's incredible. Um, so I started CrossFit in 2008. And then by the time, like, you know, I was in college, I was training constantly. You know, a couple of years down the road, my brother and I opened a gym. A year after that, I started my blog, The Naked CrossFitter, which was basically like, hey, I love CrossFit. CrossFit's hilarious. But chances are you and I both do the same stupid shit all the time, like wear tights and no shirt or chalk up for fucking, you know, like push ups, like stupid shit. Right. So I was like, I should make this blog where I can make fun of all the silly things that we do as CrossFitters. And then that blog turned into 
um, critically evaluating the decisions that CrossFit was making, <laughs> and that was my fatal error. Yes. So in the process of all of that happening, that transition from being like a parody blog to like you know a parody blog plus critical of the of the establishment, yeah. I'd started the Wadcast podcast. And we were going strong, and then we went to the 2012 games to record, and we mm-hmm. were in one of the suites at the StubHub Center recording when the head counsel of CrossFit, who <laughs> I had had words with uh-huh. previously, uh, saw me. I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah, we 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 had uh, tussled. We had tussled verbally on on Facebook, and mm-hmm. so uh, I didn't know what he looked like, but he knew what I looked like, and so he <laughs> he saw me. He sure did. He saw me and then he, he texted the right people and uh, like literally like two minutes after we had finished recording one of our episodes, uh-huh. you know, Justin Berg like barges into the suite that we're in mm-hmm. and he's like, which one of you is Arm and Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he uses your fake name he, instead of yeah, your right. real name. And to this day, I'm pretty sure they don't really know. They yeah, don't yeah. really know that that's not a real name, but that that's his fine. Really, that his real name is Stephen Wolowski. That's the... <laughs> s- I should come up with a better silly Robert name. Robert Paulson. That's right. Uh, Tim Paulson's cousin. There you oh. go. Who was in Fight Club. Uh, so... Go. Very cool. I, those I, uh, are facts. Those yes. are all facts. Uh, Charlie Heat Virgin. So I was removed <laughs> from the CrossFit Games mm-hmm. in 2012. Uh, by Justin Berg, and as a as I was a child, I quite literally I was like I was in my early twenties. Yeah, I yeah. just started this thing. I was like, just "What is full going of piss on?" And vinegar. Here's a giant international corporation that's pissed at me. Uh-huh. Like, what the fuck is going to happen? <laughs> like, are they going? This was at the time, by the way, that that CrossFit was very happily just de-affiliating people. Yeah. Like, if you disagreed with CrossFit, they were like, "Fine, fuck you. You're no longer a CrossFit gym." Yeah, yeah. That which the most famous version of that happened. If I remember correctly, in 2012, on the CrossFit Games forum, did we talk about this? No, no. I'm on the CrossFit <laughs> Games forum, someone was like, "Hey, I disagree with something, something, something," and I believe Greg Glassman himself like resurrected his like like decades old like forum handle, Greg Glassman, <laughs> CrossFit founder, and was yeah. like, "That's fine. If you're not agree in agreement, you don't have to be an affiliate anymore." And it was like, "What?" <laughs> that could happen and so like that was a fear in my mind like i was like oh fuck they're gonna take my, my they're gonna take our affiliate away from us yeah, like yeah. they're gonna take my business away from me and so uh luckily i guess pretty soon after that i was like all right i'm gonna lay low and mm. pretty soon after that <laughs> <laughs> i decided to lay i did lay low so we uh-huh. kept doing the wadcast but pretty soon after that classic technique run away <laughs> anthos that's right live to fight another day anthos happened yeah. and anthos was when uh um Greg was getting a divorce and his ex-wife was essentially trying to sell her 50% stake in CrossFit mm-hmm. to a uh, venture capital. Firm. Dark times. Dark times. Because I think what it did was it showed. And now, honestly, telling you the story now is kind of nerve wracking because this is how I remember it. And these things all make sense to me in mm-hmm. hindsight. Someone watching and or listening to this who probably is working for CrossFit HQ is going to be like, that is not at all how any of this <laughs> happened. But but in hindsight, the way that I saw this happen was essentially the Anthos situation woke CrossFit up to the fact that there are much bigger bad guys than just one loud dude who mm-hmm. loves what generally we're doing but disagrees with some decisions. Oh, like, yeah. like I was a thorn in the side and... Anthos is like a fucking weed whacker yeah. coming to kill you. The, right? en- the <laughs> enemy of my enemy is my friend. Correct. And so I, uh, I just kind of did my thing. I was like, all right, that's, that's fine. This was in the in the time when like, you know, CrossFit was mm. was very happy to create a blacklist, like ha- happy to hold a persona non grata, and uh, and make sure that their access was limited to people who could be interesting. The mm. media landscape was completely different. We weren't allowed to really talk about crossfit and say that we were even crossfitters like yeah, you yeah. couldn't say you were a crossfitter um without Wild. without having that like blessing from crossfit mm-hmm. and so you know it was, it was a very weird time it was mm-hmm. a really weird time and over time it was like the wadcast grew i left the gym joined flow elite the my position at flow elite it got me literally face to face with pretty much everybody that I was like yeah, interacting yeah. with online. Yeah, and yeah. then that, uh, that, that ended earlier this year. And I was like, fuck, let's start this YouTube channel, yeah, start yeah. the YouTube channel. And suddenly all those relationships that over the past six years may have, may possibly have started off sour. 
mm-hmm. aren't really that bad anymore. Like I, I have, I, I, would, I have a lot of good friends who are working at CrossFit HQ now. People who I interact with on a regular basis, not necessarily in person, but mm-hmm. who you know, I, I know that we see eye to eye. I know we agree on ninety nine yeah. percent of things, and like that one percent difference, or even if it's like a five percent difference or a ten percent difference, doesn't really put me on like a blacklist anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's a really good feeling because, you know, the same thing that was happening to uh personalities like media people or parody blogs people like ben smith's dad um (laughs) people like epic beast mode people like drywall Mm -hmm. the same thing that was happening to to them was was kind of inadvertently also happening to the events you know we have like this giant graveyard of events that were Mm -hmm. super fucking cool and now they're dead and if crossfit had embraced these events before this year those events could possibly be around and could have fit as these qualifiers and unfortunately you know the games marketing machine did a really good job of what it was doing back then yeah and i think now is the perfect time for them to be doing what they're doing right now which is step aside allow the fan base to be fans allow outside media to be outside media and allow outside events to flourish yeah and i think that that actually in principle um relates i think there's a line that can be drawn between uh the fact that they're allowing they're no longer taking this adversarial uh, relationship with throwdowns etc and are embracing them with something that has also been very contested lately and pertains directly to your videos and directly to them posting it on their site a common criticism that I am seeing over and over and over again uh, in comments is, so CrossFit's just leaking information to random people? This is so unprofessional. It's so <clears throat> unprofessional that they're leaking information to the morning chalk up. No official word. And uh, I want to take a minute to address that criticism. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> well, I think that two things. A, I think that's just sort of uh, uh, this weird, another sort of weird sour grapes thing. I mean, it's like, what exactly... Can you not do on Wednesday at your box because they haven't released an official statement about what the plan is for next year? You pretty much know all the pieces, and they're taking that information and they're putting it out there, literally posting it to their Facebook page and to to games.crossfit.com. So what is what's the problem with looping someone else in? I don't get it. It's not. It's so the people calling it unprofessional. I think are just looking for some sort of tomatoes well, he, to throw at well, them. Well, here's what they would have wanted. Yeah. They wanted a poorly written, <laughs> poorly worded press release on CrossFit.com, Games.CrossFit.com, the, the, rather than a highly entertaining and engaging yes. video that they, explains all the same. They things. wanted. They wanted mm. a long video with Dave Castro standing in front of a camera, and <clears> pausing <throat> a lot, explaining it step by step. I think that's what they wanted. But no I jump point, cuts in that video. But I want to point out the fact that. As we discussed previously, apparently there were a lot of layoffs around the media department of CrossFit, um, and uh, one of the things that we were very excited about was the idea that maybe they will be finally allowing in outside media sources to games coverage, allowing in outside media sources uh, into this into this sort of world to create this bigger decentralized ecosystem in the media in the same way they're doing around the competitions. And I think that this move, uh, Greg Glassman talking to Morning Chalk up. Greg Glassman talking to Arm and Hammer. I think these sorts of things is a really great step in in actually kind of beginning to sow the seeds of that media landscape themselves because they could put a big post up on their Facebook page, put a big post up on uh you know on on the main on the website, and then just let people slowly begin to pick away at it. Instead, they're injecting adrenaline into the idea of people in the community, uh, this community that's been that's been you know covering this for 10 years or injecting some adrenaline into it and saying morning chalk up you get to break this arm and hammer you get to break this and they're kind of bolstering these people who have kind of felt a little bit shut out from official participation yeah. i think that that's a really great thing in the same way that they're announcing that granite games and Wadapalooza and all these other throwdowns are now part of the crossfit family now they're saying all these outside media sources who have spent a lot of time being shut out from that world sometimes being literally thrown out Correct. of that world are now part of the family. And I think that that's really cool because they're basically using this big audience they have to direct attention towards uh, some of those things. Yeah. And Kyle, I, I don't understand though why you're praising this so much. I mean, clearly cro- the media employees of CrossFit would have been the best media employees there are to be found in the world. The best on camera personalities, yes. 
the best video editors, all of that, would have been the best in the world employed by CrossFit, not these outside people. They Obviously. wouldn't have gone. They wouldn't yes. have gone for anything but the best. Well, I'm sure that now Ouch. that I'm sure that now that they've gone out there and they've seeded the rest of the world, that the soon they'll flourish each one of them independently, like a flower, on that uh, planet at the end of Wrath of Khan. I think there are. <laughs> I think there are there are two things to to realize when it comes to this whole like. Why hasn't there been an official announcement yet? Blah, blah. Like, first of all, um, there is an idea, a philosophy that is driving that, which is to embrace the fact that outside media needs to exist in order for your thing to be real. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it the only voice is CrossFit's, the only official voice is CrossFit's, and every, everyone else is is basically strangled to death then it's propaganda it's not actually yeah. covering an actual thing it's yeah. just propaganda yeah. the second thing is think clearly just for one second like like stop being upset for just a second and just think about why wouldn't they use their official channels it's it's a purposeful move it's yeah. not it's not an accident it's not it's not is it, you know, listen? It's my, not a lack of organization it's not a or lack professionalism. Of organization. It's not a. It's not lack of professionalism. It is a purposeful move. Now, the the idea or meaning behind that that move may not be clear to anybody other than Greg Glassman. Mm -hmm. But this is this is a, a decision that is proactively being made. Yeah. To to not use the existing media that they have the existing arms and tools that they have they want to develop and use new tools for whatever reason like reasons that you know someone may be able to guess or some people know but the the i think the idea is this this like embracing of other media and purposefully not using the tools already in the toolkit and i especially agree with you because it directly benefits us in this situation yeah it does. which means it's great yeah 100 percent. and that was one of my <laughs> biggest things uh i i still like listen i am not i am not uh under any sort of false understanding of what role I play in this community. <laughs> Pawn is the role, by right. the way. I am, Pawn I am of this community. a mm -hmm. very small piece of a large machine. Mm -hmm. I'm an enthusiastic piece, but I am still a very small piece of a large machine. And I think that... In I a, don't think you should shortchange yourself so much, though. In a, in a greater sense, I think my role is, is vital to mm -hmm. the survival of CrossFit as a sport. It is, mm -hmm. it is vital because there needs to be super excited fanboys of the sport mm -hmm. who can talk mm -hmm. and will talk about this thing in a way that starts and continues conversations across the world. And that needs to occur and it needs to live. Mm -hmm. But I also know where I sit in like the hierarchy of these things. And mm -hmm. like maybe in our tiny little space, I'm, I'm like, you know, high enough up there to get a phone call from Greg Glassman and talk about it, but it still threw me for a loop. Like I had to take an hour to just like try and come down off of what had occurred yeah, after yeah. that phone call was done. Like just getting a phone call from Greg Glassman, hearing him say, Hey man, I, I I've liked a lot of the stuff you're putting out. It seems mm -hmm. like you're understanding what we're trying to do. Yeah. And then having this like in depth conversation where essentially he was like, ask me whatever you want. I'm an open book. Sweet. I was like, oh, Jesus, like this is crazy. And so, you know, there's there there was to me this really visceral moment of just trying to wrap my brain around this experience. And <laughs> I, I still don't know if I figured it out. And like that's you what, asked him front or back, front, front to back, front to back, or back <laughs> to front. I know exactly. Yeah. That's right. How did you know? Uh, <laughs> but no. the world will never know the answer. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that's yeah. for me and me alone. Yeah. I mean, you if you just think critically about any other mainstream sport, any sport that matters, it's not the sports institution itself that talks about how great that sport is. Mm -hmm. It's ESPN. It's NBC. It's random bloggers online. It's mm -hmm. outside institutions do all sorts of things for real yeah. sports. Outside Ooh. institutions yeah. run events. They do media. They do drug testing. Yes. Right. Outside, <laughs> of it, outside organizations no, do no, all sorts of things. Nobody for the would give a shit if if if. 
the the L.A. Lakers are like LeBron James is the best basketball player ever. Of course you fucking think yeah. that he's your player, right? And you just paid him a buttload of <laughs> and money. And you just paid yeah, him yeah. a buttload, so you have uh, to have outside <laughs> media. <laughs> or the president of uh, the NBA is just out there filming uh, on his Instagram stories. LeBron James and goes, "Yeah, he's great." <laughs> 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 like dope. Um, I don't want to get. I want to get back to Armin's actual conversation. <laughs> Hi, Greg LeBron. Glassman. He's not paying attention. <laughs> um, uh, come give me a hug. I, I come bet, give I me bet. a hug while come, I'm doing this. Come give me a hug. <laughs> come give me a hug, LeBron. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm sorry. We just ruined your relationship with CrossFit. <laughs> Armin Ham- at Armin Hammer is not responsible for the things yeah. that we say. Um, but he, I do he's want concentrating. That's right. He's concentrating. Yeah, um, giving my doggo pets. The but I want to get back to the, the Glassman thing in a second, but I do want to say in fairness to CrossFit with regard to like this whole like uh, adversary relationship with, um, with, with media sources and other things, it's also important to remember the climate uh, that CrossFit existed in in 08, 09, uh, 2010, when it started to become a non-ignorable phenomenon in the fitness world, and just how vicious most quote-unquote mainstream media sources were about, like, the level of dismissive condescension present in things like Men's Health Magazine and other sources of, here's a new fad, it's this ridiculous thing called CrossFit, this is going to last for five minutes, these people out in this little poorly attended stadium are calling the champions uh, the fittest people on earth. How fucking quaint is that? And it was just like, and so you understand why they wanted to control the message about the messaging about, because why on earth would you want to invite them in during a period where like, like, Literally everything that was written about CrossFit was how stupid and dangerous it is. And here's a panel of experts that we're quoting. We're not going to quote Greg Glassman. Here's a panel of experts we've brought in to quote to explain to you how stupid and dangerous CrossFit <laughs> is. And that was the timbre of anything, unless it was basically like at super cross. I mean, social media didn't even exist at that point, really. Uh, and Twitter didn't until just right around then. But it was just so, 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 so dismissive. You kind of understand why they put their guard up at yeah, that time. Of course. That shit was mad influential. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why I didn't do CrossFit mm-hmm. for the longest time. Yeah. Because I thought I would just get hurt and die. And yeah. I was I was talking to, uh, yesterday I was, we were doing the Wadcast and I was talking to Kenny Kane, who was like one of the original founders of the Wadcast. And actually, if you know anything about the Wadcast history, he was on the show for the first like year or so but left because it was becoming too big of a headache for him to deal with the politics around being on a podcast with me. Uh, The guests would hmm. come on the show, not know who I was, have a great time, and then afterwards realize, oh, I was talking to this guy who's on the blacklist, (laughs) and if I am shown talking to him, it's going to be a problem for Uh, me. And so that was like a series of like political things that, that uh, Kenny had to deal with, but basically we had this conversation with him about, um, you know, like he, he, he put it really well, essentially saying like, dude, CrossFit started as double birds against the entire fitness industry. Mm -hmm. Like Greg Glassman started this whole thing as like a, you are not good enough to hang with us. Mm -hmm. Like here's a workout you can't do, but show up and I'll scale it for you. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And then, you know, that first New York times article where he's like, yeah, of course CrossFit will kill you. Yeah, you know, he like played into it. It's very yeah. smart. It's a smart way of marketing your thing. But there's only so far you can go with that adversarial tone, right? There's only so far it'll take you, and it's taken CrossFit a, a real long distance. And they've slowly been weaning themselves off of that yeah. adversarial tone. But they also aren't afraid to stand up for themselves when there's bullshit like, you know, fake injury data. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there was what also what's the name of that organization? Oh, NSCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's basically fucking done. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, also there was a at the time there was this notion, and this has actually continued to kind of persist in the whole like cheer your competitors on sort of a thing. But there was this it's the few of us against the world kind of attitude that if you were doing CrossFit, certainly I'm sure if you worked for CrossFit, it's like listen, everyone in the world is trying to stomp this out or shit on this, so we need to band together, all get on the same fucking page, and then you know, and then sort of like come on in for the big for the big win and keep marching forward. And so you almost so again, I'm just kind of trying to give them the a little bit of the benefit of the doubt here and say like there was so if there's one guy and he's supposed to be kind of in our camp and he's just like why don't they test the athletes or whatever the thing is like listen guys. 
Later is the time for that. Now is the time for everyone to get fucking moving united in the same front, direction. Right. Yeah, united front. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what they were trying to do at the time. And now it's like now it's but the thing is like now CrossFit is so well established. You know, it has it is permeated now. Like you see CrossFit boxes that are full of rings and tires and Olympic lifting plates that are people like, yeah, CrossFit's bullshit. My new gym thing is the best thing. Whatever. It's so permeated. Culture Gold's this point. fit. Like Gold's fit. Mm. We should do, we should go to a Gold's fit. Do they I even know. exist? I'm 100% in. Um, so. I think I could get us into one. Yes. We're I know gonna, a guy. I know we a guy. Could get to, we could get thrown <laughs> out of one. Um, but uh, anyway, so matter? now they don't have to have their guard up anymore in the way they did back then. So they right. kind of start. And anyway, it's it, this is like a bit overdue in a way. Yeah, because you know, I think I think if it wasn't for CrossFit and the way CrossFit, uh, I, I mean, I, it sounds a little goofy, but CrossFit did change the way people consume fitness, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it didn't reinvent the wheel when it mm-hmm. comes to fitness, and people are always excited to tell you about how someone else thought of CrossFit before. Greg mm-hmm. Glassman did, or that all Greg Glassman did was add a stopwatch, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say even if you were to just simplify that process to just that sentence, you just added a stopwatch, which I, I disagree with. I, yeah. I fundamentally think that that is garbage because yeah. if you read the first few editions of the CrossFit Journal, there's so much fucking gold in there just in terms of the mindset involved, the physiology involved, the process, the methodology, the why behind the randomization. It. It's it, it's just it's incredible. And yeah. I think anyway, so neither here nor there. But even if you were to give them that argument, the mm-hmm. idea of, you know, the 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 only thing that he brought was the stopwatch, then you still have to credit CrossFit with the explosion of fitness as a consumer product that it is today. Mm -hmm. If it isn't for CrossFit, there is no such thing as a soul cycle. There is no such thing as the bar method. There Mm -hmm. is no such thing as um, fucking orange theory, right? Those things don't exist. And now there are dozens of sort of like interval based high power output, Mm -hmm. get some rows in there, get some skiers in there, mix it up maybe with some boxing or whatever the fuck your conditioning thing is or Tabata gyms or whatever. Like, all of that exists. There are Tabata gyms? Mm-hmm. I'm sure there is. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of that exists only because the consumption of fitness as a product was was like sort of primed in the consumer by CrossFit. They are the Chipotle of fitness. Correct. There's oh, so many shit. imitators now because they proved They're that the Subway. There's yeah. a Subway of fitness. Well, the I order line method. The order the order line method's interesting, but what Subway did is that Subway brought into a fast and convenient uh, setting, like a fast food setting, uh, food that was prepared in this quality way, uh, you know, with old school cooking techniques and everything, so people could get fast food that was good and healthy for them. There have been so many imitators after that, and yeah. in that way. They're the Chipotle of. Uh, I'll, I'll take of, it. Uh, of, uh, of, uh, of sure, <laughs> I'm sure they would take it as well. I, yeah. I think. I think at the end, at the at the end of the day, like you know, looking at sort of the landscape of fitness right now, it's hard to say. Mm-hmm. Hey, maybe we should have made this move in the CrossFit game season years ago. Mm-hmm. But I think looking forward, it's clear that at some point, this was not only going to become necessary, but was going to become much more of a of a painful process right mm-hmm. like now is the only good time to do it if you if you'd waited any longer it would have made the games even more like you know built into the situation it's in it yeah. would have made the outcry even greater even though people are literally complaining about something they don't know about mm-hmm. yeah, and the chances of of granite games Wadapalooza like still being dwindles. the forces that they are yeah mm-hmm. it dwindles yeah. and i think down the road looking at sort of where things are going to have to go i think eventually this this sport has to first of all we have to figure out what to call it because we can't call it crossfit because mm-hmm. there's no such thing as like a sport that is also the name of an international corporation that's a weird thing right mm-hmm. and so we have to figure out a name for this sport and i've talked to a lot of people who have a lot of experience in this thing and they throw around a bunch of different names one or two of them sound pretty cool i'm not sure if any of them are okay enough to like you know like sort of throw out there or things mm-hmm. that might stick but I think I think there's there's a there's a process in which that's occurring and I, that, that's important. And the second thing that has to happen is not just that we have to find a name for this thing, but that the the sports organization has to be separated from CrossFit mm. as a health and fitness organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't see the NSCA running their own 
uh, sports, right? You see USA Weightlifting. You see USA Weightlifting is the commissioner mm-hmm. and educator in their sport. So it's there, but that only works because of the Olympic model. Mm. So CrossFit won't bow down to be not just the head honcho of their own their own world. They're not going to just slot themselves in at like the fourth level of hierarchy to become part of the Olympic model and sort of mimic what USA Weightlifting does by being both the educator and the organizing body. They're going to need to split those things at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the point at which that happens, I think, is going to be very interesting. I think it's going to be very curious to see because, you know, people don't talk about it very much, but IF3 is a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it's not just a hobby. There are there are dozens of countries involved with the International yeah. Federation of Fitness. Shout I'm out, not sure. What shout it. out to my boy, Matt DeLugas. He's going to compete in London. Mm. And London, the first week of October is the World Championships, mm. right? What is this, huh? The IF3 is essentially the... the Trying uh, to be the governing body. Trying to be the governing body mm. to get CrossFit as a sport, fitness as like a sport, the into, into the okay, world. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, like, all jokes and, like, mm. bullshit aside, <clears throat> targeted towards it, it's caught a lot of flack because everybody's like, oh, they're trying to get into the Olympics. But it it it's, like... It's persevering because there is a hunger for this. Yeah. Like, I want to compete, but the fucking CrossFit Games and the regionals is this weird circuit mm-hmm. that I can't get into. But I'm still really fit, and I want to, like, show the world how fit mm-hmm. I am. So you have all these people. Yeah, that's the thing is, I don't know if, I mean, maybe on some level, the CrossFit could in the future separate the health and fitness wing from the actual competitive side and not run the quote-unquote CrossFit games. But I don't know if necessarily that's a step that they need to take for the growth of the sport. I think that they need to allow the sport to grow, which they're taking fantastic steps towards right now. I think they need to allow other competitions to flourish, allow other athletes to grow, because then at a certain point... If that is successful, if the sport continues to grow in popularity, there's more competitions, there's more eyeballs on those competitions, economies are created around them and all that same way we've discussed up to this point, then the best case scenario is a point where the fact that CrossFit HQ owns their own competition called the CrossFit Games becomes, you know, uh, not... Uh, kind of superfluous to the larger community, but maybe is not quite so central to that community. So it's like it's not the end. It's like it, it, with something like the NBA, like like the NBA and basketball are completely synonymous. But if they allow other competitions and things to grow around them, then there's a whole large. Uh, there's a whole large, again, ecosystem of other competitions, and the fact that one among those competitions, one of those things, is directly and, affili- and officially affiliated with CrossFit HQ ceases to become, you know, like some sort of weird conflict of interest, but at that point becomes just a feature of that particular competition. Correct. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think one of the possibilities here, it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to happen that CrossFit splits. Uh, from the games as an organization. I don't think that's 100% necessary. I do think that in order for it to stay around, what you're describing has to happen. Mm-hmm. It, there, the market and environment of all these other events needs to be robust enough that it is no longer just the open and the games as the end-all be-all yep. participation, right? So envision down the line... 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, if it works the way it should, if the market grows, if the interest in CrossFit continues to grow, you should like kind of be able to run the CrossFit games the way like FIFA runs the World Cup. Mm-hmm. It's not the only participation of professional soccer. Yep. It is one expression of participation in yep. professional soccer. Mm. And so it might be the most important one. It might be the one that most people are pumped about, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's not the only one. In yeah. fact, there are hundreds, thousands of professional soccer players yep. making lots and lots of money who never compete I've, in yeah. in yes. the World Cup. And the so same way we're talking about the USA track and field. There are tr- runners and things that yeah. will, that have amazing sponsored careers and they'll never set foot on an Olympic stage in their or uh, in in their lives you know and uh, stuff so the same thing I think an important this is this is many steps down the line but let's get fucking nuts <laughs> uh, I think that at a certain point though an important uh, benchmark will be the point where if because they are officially sanctioned your Wadapaloozas and your granite games becomes big enough media events at what point does 
a lack of official affiliation with CrossFit no longer become a barrier because there's enough interest around the sport that one can now start up an independent throwdown that doesn't bear the CrossFit name, that isn't a sanctioned uh, qualifying event for the games, and that can then also be successful. And that opportunity is more possible now that they are officially sanctioning events and that they, you can go out and actually prove that and create an audience for that. And many different minds can work on creating an appetite for people to watch fitness competition. Well, you know how difficult it is to, uh, to, uh, to create a more important event at the CrossFit Games? A prize of greater than three hundred something thousand dollars. <laughs> that is true. Yes, that is a hundred percent. The number one competition is the is the one that has uh, has the five hundred thousand dollar yes, purse. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that will be Dubai in two years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, funny you should mention Dubai. I had a conversation with uh, some of the event organizer organizers behind uh, behind Dubai, and I got some insight into how they run their organization and how they run their event in a way that I never expected to actually have any sort of clear answers. And I was really surprised because the vibe that you get and the perspective that we all have on Dubai mm -hmm. is that it's this like hyper elite, hyper expensive write off, mm -hmm. right? It's like a bunch of the best crossfitters in the world and everything is paid for. No one mm -hmm. has to worry about anything. Like is this crazy extravagant experience but in reality, um, I'm just picturing the end of like the Ten Commandments. So they have that calf made out of gold and people are like dancing <laughs> in the desert and like palm fronds and shit. That's pretty much what I picture. But is, it, is it like that? I, I'm not sure if it's like that. Okay. That's a good question. Uh, I think I think so. The example that they gave me was one of the ways. So I, I've said this on the show before, and I think it's really important to to continue hammering this point is that a lot of these events, you know, if you look at the big three. Dubai, Wadapalooza, Granite Games. Mm -hmm. They are all totally different. Completely fucking different. Granite Games runs on a participatory model. They have to have as many athletes as they can. They run it efficiently. They run it perfectly. Logistically, it's a fucking like clock. It never runs wrong. Yeah, it's nuts. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And if they can move it to a place where they can support more spectators mm -hmm. and have the freedom to design like a pro event in a pro venue, it's going to bring a fuck ton of spectators. It's going to be awesome. Wadapalooza is a festival. It's built around the model of like a music festival. You show up in the morning, you hang out, drink all day, you watch acts. And then at the end of the day, you watch the big act, which mm -hmm. is like the pros and the pro teams. Right. Mm hmm. And it's lit like a music festival. And it's there lit at the end. like a music festival. And, and, and Weezer's it's, there for some reason. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's nauseating. Like a music <laughs> yeah. Uh, and <laughs> Dubai, <laughs> Dubai is like this super elite competition where only the best of the best are invited and can qualify. Mm -hmm. But they only run the event as a way of popularizing the idea of hey come experience what the uae has going on it's a it's a tourist marketing mm -hmm. tool in the same way that if you have any familiarity with uh, jiu-jitsu the uae jiu-jitsu federation is like is is uh well known for putting on incredible events as like a, a series of events around the world and then the the grand slam is in dubai and you know they have you know, whatever, like the best athletes in the world coming in to, mm -hmm. to compete or like I sometime over the next couple months, there is like the rugby sevens, like the UAE rugby mm -hmm. sevens tournament where like 150,000 people mm -hmm. are going to this rugby sevens tournament and they have tournaments for uh, like sevens teams anywhere from children to like the best rugby players in the world who are mm -hmm. coming to play for money and yeah. glory and whatever in front of big crowds. And so they essentially have this model of we want to bring people in. And we've talked about it before of like how they recruit CrossFit gym owners. Like there's a reason why so many European and American expatriates are coming into Dubai to open gyms. Missed out. Yeah. Right. Especially Chase, Chase, Chase fucked it up. <laughs> and so uh, I think I think when you look at it in the context of that and in the context of Dubai's goal, like literally Dubai, the state the, yes. the the government Dubai goal, official the official <laughs> Dubai stance on the Dubai CrossFit Championships mm -hmm. is come experience what Dubai has going mm -hmm. on. So he was telling me that they um, they pay everyone who qualifies and everyone who shows up. Mm. And I was like, first of all, what, what do you have to do like, to qualify? That's incredible, <laughs> right? That's incredible because yeah. at the CrossFit Games, 
you can literally show up to the CrossFit Games, one of the fittest human beings on the planet, and lose thousands of dollars yep. because you made no money and spent a fuck ton. Yeah. Right. So he was saying that essentially they they work. Boom. They like they give the last place qualifier gets like several hundred dollars and the last place at the end of the weekend still gets like a thousand dollars. So like right there you make you make a couple thousand dollars mm -hmm. and then they also work because it's built to be this like experience Dubai thing. Uh, they help with like like discounted airfare um, and discounted hotels and discounted like experiences you know, for like your crew or whatever to come try it out and see like, you know, hey, what's what is this mall like or what is the actual like the water park like all those different things that we see on, I don't know, like Travel Channel or whatever, the, whatever it is. Indoor surfing. What's Indoor surfing. Indoor right? snowboarding. Indoor mm. snowboarding. Sure. What's it like to go four wheeling in the dunes? <laughs> what is it like? And what's so, it like to go four wheeling in a Lamborghini? Yeah. <laughs> it's very quiet and still. Yeah. <laughs> Fire filled. <laughs> and so uh, I think I think if you look at these, if you look at all the events, the big events, based off of what their strengths are mm. and what their goals are, you start seeing that they're the only thing that all of us have in common is that we're just really big fans of this thing. Mm -hmm. And that type of diversity in the approach, I think is really important because some people are, are not, I mean, I don't know if anybody's complaining, but someone asked me, they were like, Hey, you know, are they all going to have different programming? And I was like, yes, yes. And it's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh -huh. They're all going to have their own flavor of programming. They're all going to do their own thing. And it's going to be wonderful because guess what? That's what qualifying for the games was like yeah. before regionals was all sort of like sure you know, on the same page. It will make yeah. instead of uh, instead of watching the regionals competitions and it being like Groundhog Day, mm -hmm. uh, it will be like a new adventure every time. Right, and it's like, but what if one of their programming is slightly off and it throws into question the person who qualified? Well, then I guess we'll have something to talk about. Finally, right? You know <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, it's you know? it's basically not going to be sixteen competitions that just prove that Matt Fraser is the best. Yes, over and over. Correct. There because be you're not going to be able to look at it. it. You won't be able to do that cross regional comparison like you could for everybody. So you already knew that Matt Fraser a hundred percent would win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. it's only ninety nine. What am I supposed to do with the computer I bought just for doing cross regional comparisons? I what am know. I supposed to do with my cross regional comparison unit? You sign it up. Answer my Hub. question, or <laughs> connect it to so Pornhub. Caught off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Is this real?" <laughs> uh, yeah, we invoiced a lot of stuff back when Flow Elite was a thing. Yeah, seriously, crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't, I, I think there's, there are real, and that's this is something that I, I'm trying to get across to people as well is that there are real risks here, mm -hmm. right? This is not a guaranteed success. Uh, there are certainly pitfalls and there are entire there's there's a it's a small slice, but there's a slice of this community that is sort of being left out to dry. Right. The on the bubble athletes have now found themselves on the edge of a much, much larger bubble. Yeah. And that yeah. that fucking hurts some people like if yeah. someone has been basically an on the bubble athlete, whether getting into regionals or getting into the games and you have dedicated like sacrificed and hurt yourself to get to that point mm -hmm. and suddenly you're like what the fuck just happened mm -hmm. it's like yeah there's gonna be some whiplash from that right there's gonna be some sour grapes from that and yeah. and that's a that's a population that you know may need to be assuaged at some point yeah that's be the, the the other people that are really hurt by it are the people that had an ego about making it to regional mm -hmm. state and they had this superiority complex and mm -hmm. now they are they are the common people. Yes. That's right. They're like us. You know, they can they can go out and they can become their us. own fucking, uh, you know, champion of whatever the local competition is. The other um, criticism that uh, that I've seen a bunch of was, uh, what was it, saying that um, I've completely lost my train of thought. I had something and it's gone. Armin, pick up where I left off. Uh, <laughs> the other criticism that we see... I thought it was going to come to me by the end of that sentence yeah. and it didn't. Like it, I, it was it was just loaded like a fucking bullet in a chamber and I was like, when are these fucking assholes going to stop talking so I can make my brilliant point? And I was thinking about s so hard about how smart I am 
like an anticipation of it <laughs> that I just that I would I was miles away and when you guys finally stopped I was like here's my moment and I jumped in I think you were gonna comment out. I think you're gonna comment on season two of Westworld it was something yeah. like Some, that. something like that uh-huh. sometimes I start a sentence and I have no idea where it's going <laughs> oh that that's how <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that happens all well, the that, time that, that's the that's a different phenomenon that's the improv sentence that's yeah. where I'm required to answer a question someone asks me and so I begin that sentence confident that I'll be able to make up words yeah uh, towards the end of it I, I fucking fa- i remembered oh, he got it. It back. i remembered the co- yeah, so true. because we actually uh, w- and we do read the comments one of the things i remember someone i read the comments on armin's videos um I but i one of the things is this was a guy asking like well, how are you guys just so fucking positive that you know that the lower tier crossfit games athletes are somehow going to make more money doing this like how do you know that and I was like, well, just look at what they're facing right now. Like, I, because I'm sure that there are plenty of people who have aspirations to like move up over the years. But if you're the kind of person who's coming in 35th at the CrossFit Games, and it's, even if you move dramatically one way or the other, your best case scenario is still kind of being in the bottom heats of the CrossFit Games, which still makes you one of the fittest fucking people on the planet. You know, that's that's kind of it for you right now in terms of it's just doing that over and over again for the next several and years. You know what uh, unifies uh, all the people in that position? No money. Yes, exactly. No money for the competition, some money for sponsorships, but blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now it's now there's an infinite number of possibilities for people to create revenue streams that uh, kind of branch off from the popularity of of the fittest people on earth getting uh, together and determining who is fit. So, you know, competitions that will now be sanctioned, media rights around those competitions, sponsors around those competitions, sub competitions within those competitions that also carry cash prizes with them. They'll be the fit beard games just for Lucas yes. Parker and Jared Enderton. If to your name is who is fitter? If your name is Beth, what options do you have? Now you'll have a games where you can just compete against other Beths and find out who is the fittest Beth. Exactly. Confident make this Jared Stevens will win that beard competition. Jared Stevens. Jared Enderton. No, right. Stevens. Stevens? Which Jared, Stevens? Jared Stevens is like uh, the Viking. He's like he's like Viking jacked bodybuilder he's, guy. Yeah, he's, he's like okay. really Kill really fit and noble athlete. Gotcha. He was on a team. Okay. He's yeah. a badass. And he's super jacked. Mm. And he is super super jacked. Did I mention he's super fucking jacked? Like uncomfortably jacked. I don't like yeah. talking about mm-hmm. him. Too jacked for CrossFit. I think we can all agree. Well, honestly, that's why he doesn't win. <laughs> yeah, because he's won elsewhere in the aesthetics department. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so, you know, actually, speaking of the comments on, on the YouTube pages, one of the most interesting comments that I saw, uh, which to me is a huge positive, but um, maybe to someone else, like, may, may sound a little bit weird, but it's this it's this idea of, like, when the games are a healthy thing, we're going to see professional games athletes professional crossfit athletes who make a living doing this Mm -hmm. who do not make the crossfit games yes and that that is a that is a sign of a healthy marketplace Mm -hmm. a sign of like a healthy environment um for this sport i don't understand it all professional basketball players who make professional basketball (laughs) money play in the nba finals correct of course there aren't there's no one who doesn't right all all Mm -hmm. 26 professional basketball players (laughs) in the world there's more than 26 Really, are there? I thought there was only Steph Curry and LeBron James. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and the who's and Steph Curry? <laughs> chef Curry with a shot. Yes. Um, yeah, He's an so Indian chef. Correct. Very spicy curry. And uh, is Shaq still playing? <laughs> I don't think so. Shaq is 112 years Shaq's old. Shaq's on TV. No way. Yeah, no. there's no way he still plays. He he doesn't ball. Shaq don't ball. <laughs> yeah. Hear that? You hear Shaq. that, Shaq? Sam yeah. called you out. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I. I think. I think. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns here. There's a lot of moments during which there are going to be very important decisions made. Decisions that are going to that greatly affect the outcome of this thing. Mm-hmm. And most people are not going to be privy to those decisions. Most people aren't going to see or hear any of those things going on or see the thought process. So you know, I. I would hope that a lot of people are more uh, like, I think I, I just want people to, to be able to give the, the crew making the decisions here, the benefit of the doubt, mm-hmm. right? Like don't assume that you're smarter than they are. Don't assume that you know 
a solution to a problem that they have analyzed longer than you. Well, that's the thing is I don't even know if you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, the thing is like uh, there, I think that it's just, you have to think through the problem and you have to know a little bit about, or just, I don't know, just think through the, the problem, I guess is the main thing because, you know, people see features of the current system that they like those features of that system are going away and that makes them mad and you have to realize like there's a better version of this out there and in order to make that better version of this you have to go and start breaking up the current version of these things you right know? and it's not that hard to envision the better version of this sport the better version of a crossfit competitive ecosystem uh it's not hard so no just think through it no, it, it, it is it is also something that would have become inevitable. Um, you know, I, I I said earlier in the show that, like, you know, I have an idea of where I stand in this echelon of things, but that I understand that my role in a greater sense is really necessary. And I, I 100% believe that. Like, if it's not for people like me, for people like Justin with the morning chalk up, even he doesn't cover the mm. sport of it as much as he's covering the news. Like he's just covers things that are going on in the space. Um, if it's not for people who are willing to cover this thing from an outsider's perspective, it will die. Mm -hmm. It it would have died. It would have slowly killed itself. Mm -hmm. It would only have become this like uh, this like who's cool who's on the in crowd, and it just would have been mm -hmm. Dave Castro and his friends yeah. doing a bunch of fitness. You can only scream from, from the mountain about how cool you are for so long before mm -hmm. you right. die. No. That's right. That's a, good, that's a good point. Like, you can't... It's not up to them to say that they're the fucking greatest thing that ever happened, right? You need other people to tell you that. If you're the one who's saying that constantly, you're just, you're just a loud mouth jackass, right? And so, you know, we don't... We, as like an outside media, are the judges of whether this thing is working or not and whether it's moving in the right direction or not. And we're the judges of its success just in the, so, in the participation. In a sense, we're like gods. Correct. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. We are, we are three American and an Armenian God. That's right. I can <laughs> see the, I can see the comments pouring in now, boy, these guys sure do have a really high estimation of themselves. Or this entire thing is just set up to make me look like a jackass. Like this it's going to be like the reveal. It's going to be so yeah. fucking I'm going to show up. They're going to invite me to CrossFit HQ. I'm going to show up there and it's going to be like the prom from Carrie. They're going to dump pig's blood on me. <laughs> Justin Berger is going to escort me out. On the but unbeknownst other, to them, you've been practicing your telekinetic powers in right. secret. Fuck yes. Under uh under on the other end of that cell phone call while you're in that rental car is just Justin Berg talking through a voice manipulator. <laughs> he thinks I'm Greg Glassman. This yeah. is going well. Yeah, that's uh that's exactly what's uh, going on, guys. That's the yep. secret. We found the secret behind the secret. Yeah. But um, you know, I, mean, I think that's fuck. that's where we're at. That's yeah. it's a weird place, but that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Armin. Listen, you've finally done it. You've you've contributed a whole lot to the the new state of the CrossFit Games. We'll invite you to HQ. But here's this thing: before you walk into the door for HQ, it's this weird thing. We're gonna have to delouse you. So if you can just remove all your clothes and underwear before you walk through this door into a darkened room, we promise everything will be great after that. And definitely, you want to make sure you're going live with it too. Yeah. Just be live streaming this whole time. Yes, be super live the whole time. Just walk. Just balls out into this darkened room. We promise He's nothing's going to happen. Because he knows that it's entirely <laughs> possible. <laughs> Dude, I don't even... There's a, whole, there's a whole deep, dark part of me that's like, this is actually what's happening. Holy fuck. It's like, why is there a 20-foot tall wicker man on that hill? <laughs> the bees! The, the bees! bees. <laughs> They're in my ass! <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that movie way too many times to be okay with it. Really? I've not seen. I've, not seen, I've seen the. I've not seen the remake. I've seen the original. Oh Wicker no, Man. the remake is the Nicolas Cage version is the one that I've seen no, multiple seen times, <laughs> and I've only ever watched <laughs> it because it is my is like a guilty pleasure of how terrible that movie is. It is bad yeah. on an epic level. Directed by Neil LeBute, of all things. Who is Neil LeBute? He's a playwright. Um, <laughs> he needs to stay the fuck away from movies. <laughs> Dude, he has directed some goddamn awesome movies. He actually has directed yeah, good yeah, movies. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the Company of Men is a goddamn masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, Your Friends and Neighbors yep. is great. Yeah, very artsy movies there. He's the not, Shape of Things. Yeah. Uh, and mostly things based around... Mo uh, 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 mostly things are based around his plays. Uh, a lot of his stuff kind of comes out of that like post mammoth period in fucking American theater where 
everything's like curse words and uh, controversial subject matters. And then I think no, this was a his lot of filmed plays yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah. And, and I think this was his shot at like a bigger studio movie was this. And obviously it got away from him. It yep. didn't work. He also did the studio uh, or the American slash black remake mm-hmm. of uh, uh, Death at a Funeral. Yes. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. with Tracy Morgan. Oh. Uh-huh. And also Peter Dinklage playing the same role in both films. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now you know that. You know, someone suggested we watch uh, The Sixth Day, the Arnold more Schwarzenegger in- movie. More <laughs> importantly. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, Chase has something more important to say. One of the top listeners, Gordon Wagner, hmm? <laughs> pushed forward Vision Quest. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> second that vote. Fuck yeah. Uh, you know, that would quest. be an interesting inversion. Cause I, I, I've never I work, seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I'm just a... Listen, Morty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, Morty. <laughs> Vision Quest, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say something about wrestling movies, Morty. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I work around wrestlers all day long. They talk about Vision Quest constantly. I they know. share Vision Quest memes and gifts with each other. And that has kind of made me never want to see Same. Vision Quest Same. ever. So. I was a college wrestler. I've never there seen it. Go. And yeah. because of that, I don't want anything to do with Vision Quest, but I uh, want to give it a shot. Yeah. You, you know what, guys? I, I honestly can't believe it. We've made it well over an hour into this episode. We haven't talked about literally the most important thing that has happened in the past 24 hours. Uh, like, someone sitting at this table deadlifted 570 oh, yes. pounds. We talked about that prior to the podcast, but Chase hell yeah. fucking big yeah. dick long <laughs> yes. deadlifted BDE. 500 <laughs> His last name is Long. Pounds. His last name is Long. You don't need to add the big dick park in the middle. It's already there. You're doing extra work. Yeah, that's right. But speaking of doing extra work, Chase, <clears throat> 570. And it was a, a, a handsome 570. It was. Yes. Yeah, a little, little hitch at the top. Yeah. The wheels did not fall off. No. No. It was, it was just as surprising for all of you as it <laughs> is for me right now. Yes. Because last time I deadlifted, mm-hmm. I was in Italy mm-hmm. in some weird-ass gym with kilo plates that were filled with pasta. And I maxed out what I assumed was, not assumed, I did the math. The cocoa. I could have done it wrong. I was with the cocoa mm-hmm. uh, at 497. <laughs> yeah. I and like, you almost exploded? I almost almost like broke something in my like leg and back. Uh-huh. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect for this whole thing. So that's a good, that's like a 73 pound uh, leap in, in about mm-hmm. a month or two. So mm-hmm. that's a, that's a pretty good leap. It was yeah. a lot of, we did a lot of reverse hypers, a lot of sumo deadlift pulls and a Fuck ton of front squats and back yeah. squats, man. Good. Yeah. I think it's well, the I mean, squats it's, that done did it's it. It's all the front squats and it's all those reverse hypers, man. Mm-hmm. But either way, uh, that's fucking huge. And you also back squatted 200 kilos plus 222 kilos, actually. Yeah. Nice. Or 202 kilos, sorry. Yeah. I, I, What's I, that I, in American? 445 pounds. Nice. I did the math this morning because I'm into these arbitrary comparisons to say that I'm better than certain CrossFit Games athletes. <laughs> the best uh and they happen to do the total and i just tested all three of those movements my strict press also mm. went up to 185 uh and that puts my total at 1200 pounds nice That's good enough for 11th place <laughs> correct hey. uh, there was like a four-way nice. tie at 11th i would have just taken 11th place right nice. after noah nice i'm happy to be right behind noah that's, that's impressive good I would. Yes. I mean, listen. Being behind Noah, you could be in way worse places. You know what I mean? He's Unless you're the bike rest, because then you are in last place. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he'll 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 kill you. Yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he'll just run you over and destroy you. No, that's Pat Velvet. Oh, I think what Whatever. Chase is learning is that the the most important, and really the only important aspect of fitness is just picking up heavier and heavier weights. Uh, and I think that. It's- as we much as to start a new sport based around that, exactly. That's that way more interesting than CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's, is. Honestly, if this whole games thing doesn't pan out, yeah, strongman, badminton champion, badminton champion, badminton. <laughs> I have terrible badminton. depth perception. That's uh, an awful idea. Yeah, I I'm super fucking pumped that Chase deadlift 570 pounds. That's, that's huge. Fantastic. That is really really impressive. Thanks yes. guys. That's no, really that's really great. fucking cool. Uh, All right, you can be on the podcast now. Yes. Now you've earned it. Now we have a minimum for anyone who needs to replace you, though. Yes. So if you have a 575 pound deadlift you are now in the running to take chase you can spot. issue a challenge <laughs> <laughs> and then you could be sitting in this chair although i will be 100 percent honest with you. Lady, 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 <laughs> i've seen that i've seen that 570 pound deadlift that chase had you better be coming with 600 plus if you're going to take that title it's from there me. you can see that it's there it's coming in the near future if you, you know? were on a deadlift bar with uh with 
uh, bigger, like fatter plates, not metal plates. Like if you're on a deadlift bar, but the weights were further out to the outside of the bar, you would have pulled 600 mm. fucking easy. Why, why is that? Because it's like it's a longer, whippier leverage. bar. Yeah, it whips. So like the first so when half pitch, of the pull is it's gonna bounce a little bit more too. They have yeah. a good deadlift bar at Hyde Park Gym. As mm-hmm. when I was there, it's a little thinner, it's a little whippier and longer. It's mm-hmm. a good it, the deadlift bars are fun. I mean, you don't have any trouble with the. You could get 600 to your knees, I think. Right now, mm-hmm. like you have no problem with that. You're it was the first part of your pull was so fucking fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, very very impressive deadlift from the fittest person on this show, and very impressive moves. Um, yes. Hopefully, it pays off and you snatch more than a girl does. Yo, and that, no, and one day shit. I forgot to tell you guys, I competed this past weekend. Really? Yeah. Oh. CrossFit. Oh wow. Where? Holy at, cow! Uh, it's CrossFit Strive Bastrop. Uh, at a little oh. local competition, <laughs> it was me. And one of our other regional athletes from my gym. Rest with, in peace, regionals. With two <laughs> with two uh, CrossFit, well, relatively CrossFit newbies. Mm. And it was not enough to carry us to victory, our regional level fitness. <laughs> uh, uh, well, who, 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 who are these newbies? Who, yeah, who are the... Uh, well, it was, it was uh, two males uh-huh. and then two females. And one of the females was the other guy's fiance. Yeah, yeah. And then the other girl was like, uh, like one of his padawans at his gym that he coaches nice. at um yeah they i mean they, they're all right like they just didn't have all the movements that yeah, held yeah. us back but uh all the events were like mock regional not mock uh mock games events oh cool mm. yeah so like we started out with a 600 meter swim with a raft oh. like in a river what yeah it's real challenging when you don't know how to fucking swim <laughs> and, then you, <laughs> then and when the water's moving sideways the whole time it's really trippy uh, <laughs> then we had to run two miles, like straight after. So you got out of the water, uh-huh. ran, and then you had like a little hour break. And it was the max snatch event where we had four minutes shared to max out our snatch. Surprised Oops. blink dot JPEG. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I, I haven't snatched in what, like since before the open. Yeah. And I hit my old PR. Nice. Yeah. Really turns easy. out, turns out when you, when you put a hundred pounds on your deadlift, Snatching mm-hmm. becomes a little easier. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it's like, uh, now. Now you just have to keep getting better at snatches. One day you'll be like Brent Fakowski, who doesn't need to snatch in order to continue snatching. Yeah. He's like, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen? Am I just going to like forget how to do it? No, it's like riding a bike. I'll figure <laughs> it out. What am I going to do? Just, uh, just, might, just get less fit by not secret. exercising? Not going to uh, happen. Yeah, I felt like I could have snatched a whole lot. I mean, I'm probably wrong, but I felt like I could have <laughs> done like 265. So is this day. like a regular competition that they're that they, that it this was gym actually does, a sanctioned or what event? It they announced it. Oh. It's the third sanctioned event. You were and this close to qualifying. Still didn't make it. It's all right. That's a bummer. I'm an yeah. alternate. Are you me, gonna? Are you guys gonna do the the Dubai qualifier? Uh, we're not gonna do the Dubai qualifier. Well, I mean, I don't know. We have a meeting. We have a meeting on Friday. Mm. So well, what else are you gonna do if not do all the damned qualifiers? God damn right. I'm not in. I'm not in control of but my it, own life. It's gonna be expensive though shit. to be an athlete now that you have to go to all 16 of the sanctioned qualifying <laughs> events. Well, you have to. You have no I other know. option. Mm-hmm. Of course, you have no other option. It's like uh, otherwise you won't be allowed to train the three hours well, yeah. of a day. <laughs> of course. I mean, <laughs> listen. Not only do you have to travel to every sanctioned event, uh-huh. but of course, for every one of these 16 qualifiers, there's a three-week online qualifier, mm-hmm. and you have to do yes. every single one of those online qualifiers, yep. so be prepared. Yep. We're talking 44 to 48 weeks of qualifying each because year. We're talking 72 weeks a year you'll be competing. <laughs> 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 because as you know, now with 16 to 17 qualifying events, sanctioned events... You throw out all strategy that you had before. When mm-hmm. You picked a date no. and then you worked yeah. and Mm-mm. trained to peak during that yep. date. No, it's a you qua- can't do that a, now. It's a quantity game. Yeah. You're gonna want to get to as many of these things as possible, yep. or you're Those definitely rookie a rookie. <laughs> 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 what are you, some noob who's not competing 15 times a year? Come on, mm-hmm. as I say with my fucking arm in a cast and neck in a sling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those days are gone. And if you couldn't tell we're being sarcastic, then uh, let us know how it goes. Then you must be a YouTube commenter on Armin's channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the funniest comments I saw um, was straight out of Bad Janet. It was just like, why is this dinkus commenting on CrossFit? <laughs> straight out of Bad Janet. I get it. <laughs> what's, what's, what, what's Bad Janet? Uh, bad Janet from, from good, good Place. place. Bad Janet. Oh, right. Oh, oh, right. Like, let me get that for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, someone was like, "This clearly this dude doesn't even lift. And I was like, 
Are you trolling me? <laughs> You're trolling me. He uh, has it's to well be. established yeah. that I don't fit this. It was brutal. It was good. It was good. I, I, do, I do enjoy how every bad person in the uh, in the bad place is defined by being on their cell phone. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you haven't started watching The Good Place, do it. Like I don't know what you're this wasting your time for. This is a paid ad from NBC. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I will. We said it, so it's true. Yeah. Yes, I now will send us money for them. I will show for them for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bottom of this description. Yeah, Chase's social security number is in the bottom you of this found, description. Find the routing and my social security. <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't watched The Good Place, it's worth it. Both seasons are on Netflix, and both seasons are fucking fantastic. And so. new episodes start at the end of September, and we're going to be reviewing every one as it comes. Correct. Mm-hmm. I still mm-hmm. have to figure out how to get it on streaming, but I think I think I'm going to be able to figure that out relatively easily. Oh wait, it's not coming just directly to Netflix. No, it garbage. is in the. It is in Europe. It is everywhere except for the United States, basically. Uh. That it just the season three will air concurrently on Netflix as it is on uh, I don't know guys but might have to buy an antenna you just buy the here. season pass on iTunes that's just exactly what I'm going to yeah, do yeah, I'm yeah. just going to buy the season that's what, that's I, what I, did. I do uh, I did it on Amazon with another show that Katie and I were watching Yeah, uh, a show which I'm, I'm I used to be ashamed of but all right, it's Vanderpump Rules, which you guys don't <laughs> know. Oh no, I, I saw several episodes of Vanderpump Rules. I, I, I oh, have that's never right, because that you episode. were doing research. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, where I draw the line. Yeah, Vanderpump Rules. So I guess I'm more of a Schwartz than a Sandoval. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I don't, I don't <laughs> really doing a good this. job on this podcast. We're, to, we're getting the word out on NBC, <laughs> I'm to iTunes, take, take and Vanderpump Rules as fucking esoteric and like very specific as possible, mm-hmm. so that only like. When there's only two people that understand what I'm talking about, that's when we successfully. That's when we do it. I've done my job. We need to. We objective. need to bring in the biggest, uh, cast the widest net possible, so that we can alienate the most people in the fastest amount of time. <laughs> all 16 CrossFit sanctioned events outlined in this episode, and then it's just 30 minutes of bullshit, and then 10 minutes of us just fucking taking you down the most esoteric road you've ever been. Goddamn right. I'm th- speaking of esoteric roads. Should we? I would love to assign homework to the scaleless nation to watch the crying game i'm just oh, gonna jump no. straight Damn, to it we talked you about this want, i don't want to why do don't that. you want to watch the crying Let's game pick a different movie a movie the that I, I know you it's don't you're not Netflix. allowed Come there on. will be blood yeah no you're not allowed to watch a different movie besides the crying game because the crying game will be super fun to talk about <sighs> it certainly will all right fine we can do the crying game this time but i get to pick the next movie okay Fuck yes. <laughs> I feel like I don't win in either situation. I think that... be Vision Quest. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't think... By the way, I don't know if anyone can watch Vision Quest in, uh, on any of the streaming platforms, but I think we do need to have some enthusiasm for the movie that we want. Uh, What's that the we're elevator see. pitch for this damn movie? All right, for, for sell me game, on well, it. For, for Crying Game, the elevator pitch for Crying Game, other than the fact that we talked about it extensively on the pod on a previous episode, is the fact that it's a weird-ass Neil Jordan movie. It has Forrest Whitaker in it. It has Forrest Whitaker, who is, uh, Michael Caine said is the, his, his, the only American he ever thinks did a Cockney accent right. It is a great example of a lot of cool shit to talk about. And and honestly, the less you know about The Crying Game, the better, quite frankly, going into it. Because it's full of lots of big surprises. Yeah, suffice it to say, it is a it was a cultural moment a little while ago. And there are all sorts of references to it in other movies, such as Ace, Ace Ventura. Ventura. You will not be able to really understand all the jokes in Ace Ventura. Uh, the first one, unless you've seen The Crying Game. Now, right. is there any connection between The Crying Game and Heat? Uh, <laughs> let me think about that for a second. They're uh, close to the same. They're a few years apart. The Crying Game was a little earlier, I think. Yeah, it was yeah. a few years earlier, yeah. Like I'm just trying to find 90s. any sort of tenuous connection between They're, they're both two. on Netflix. That's the connection. Yeah, yeah, the connection is we're looking for right. movies so we now, talked about on the podcast yeah. that are also on Netflix. That's, a, that's good. That's good. Now we're talking. This yes. is a paid ad for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Once damn, again, right. we're getting number security. We're getting the word out on NBC, Netflix, and iTunes. We These really are all wanna, very small mom and pop shops. Give them the never bump. Heard of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. You know what? I'm sold. We'll do the crying game because you're right. We did talk about it a fuck ton that one episode. Yep. Mm-hmm. It has come up a bunch of times and since then. Trust me, it'll be. The reason really is that it's fun times to talk about yep. here and on the fun podcast. times to watch, by the way. And I think that. To, to the hard pitch to the scaleless nation despite Armin's reticence about talking about uh, this this film 
Uh, it is really fun. Just well, click, just click play. I'm going to warn you right now that I'm going to be picking terrible movies for us to watch. <laughs> and as a response, to I'm this. going to double down and drag my heels and complain about it the whole time I watch it, even if I like it. There you go. See, I like and it. I'm going to say that after we watch the Crying Game, and you are thankful after a robust conversation, the, a the enjoyable viewing experience and the fun conversation that we get from it, you're going to say, "Hey, maybe I shouldn't pick shitty movies because it might be that Kyle was right." You don't want to talk about the Phantom Menace on our. <laughs> <laughs> what is there that hasn't yeah, already yeah, been no, said? So much. Mr. So Plankett has already reviewed it right. definitively. There's well, nothing short. left to say about nothing it. Nothing left. A good point. Uh, so there you go. There's your homework, folks. Watch The Crying Game which on is, Netflix. We're, if, if any other insane news happens in the next like week before we record our next episode, chances are that we're going to have to record the that hour on its own because <laughs> because I don't think there's any way that we can deal with like huge breaking news plus the hour of, yes. of crying game four hour pod in the same way by the way in the same way and I'll add this in the same way that you know if you haven't seen heat you don't quite get everything that's going on in the dark night uh, if you haven't seen the crying game but you have seen ace ventura <laughs> You will not. You do not get everything that's going on <laughs> in Ace Ventura. That's not an equal comparison. It is absolutely. It, it, it is an evil. It is a, First of all, Ace Ventura is a much better movie than The Dark Knight. So yeah. I'd much rather get <laughs> Ace Ventura I, I, than I get The Dark agreement. Knight. I'm in agreement on that. So, uh, so. yeah, but, but the in analogy Ventura, is perfect. There is no 18 wheeler that goes uh, kaboom ass over face. Yes, but um, <laughs> right ass of the 18 wheeler over the face of the. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, but it does have Sean Young in it, so that's weird. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there's your homework, guys. Watch Very the Crying Games. And we mm-hmm. are going to uh, we're going to discuss that next week, as well as more news about what's going on in this whole wacky wild world of ours uh, in the world of CrossFit. Not the whole wacky wild world, but you know what I mean. The wide world of sports. And indeed, there is some aspects of the Crying Game we could even tie into CrossFit discussions and the various statements Greg Glassman has made in recent uh, months and all that. So okay. it can all be, we can tie it all together, I, I mean, think. Well, sir, I don't know if we need to be able to tie it back to fitness, but that's fine too. Let's I think do we that. can. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and, and get our, get let's get our uh, plugs in, guys. Uh, I am at Dong Monster <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the most central. I am at Mr. Kyle Bo- Bogart on the most central uh, Instagram account on the internet. I'm at Cliff Bogart on an Instagram account that I'm probably going to change to Dong Monster 69 <laughs> if it's not taken. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I already reserved it <laughs> as soon as I saw that meme. Uh, I'm at Chase504. You can see me pull 570 pounds on there if you want and talk you shit. Sure can. Hell yeah. And I am at Arm and Hammer TV. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And thank you for those of you who are watching. I think uh, we're getting a really good feedback on. Uh, the video version of these podcasts. So mm-hmm. more um, sunny is what I'm seeing. Yeah, everyone is really just commenting on on how pumped they are mm-hmm. about the dogs. In the comment section, vote Team Sunny or mm-hmm. Team Loki. No, don't do that. One Please day, do. One it will day, feed if my ego. <laughs> one they day, don't know who the differences are. If we get enough hashtag White. Team Sunny. <laughs> Sunny. Then we'll just pair the audio version of the podcast with 60 minutes of video of Sunny and Loki running around with no not featuring us at Dude, all. Dude, I would love that. That's totally <laughs> fine. I could do that. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for watching and listening. And we're going to catch you next week. Later. 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 Bye.